how do you read ECG? You should know the normal electrical conduction of the heart, yes? You can see that the SA node pumps to the AV node, and the AV node will hold the impulse. There's a brief a delay so that the atrium can contract. Then after the atrium has contracted, it will pump, uh, it will send the impulse down the ventricles, and the ventricles will contract, yes? That is why I like to use 2PDF to explain this so that students can understand perfectly. So this is QRS complex represents ventricle depolarization. Yes, let's let's start. What is the exigent? So our P wave, this is our P wave, yes, it represents atrial depolarization, yes, like contraction. Then QRS complex represents ventricle depolarization. But why do we have three waves? Because if you look at your ventricle, yes, the Q RS, the Q represents the depolarization of the interventricular septum R. The R represents uh, this the mass, yes, this part. Why the S represents the this part here, the, you know, if you turn the heart back, yes. Okay, then the T wave is relaxation or repolarization of your ventricles, yes. That's why you have your T wave here. Okay, let's start with the how do you ECG. When you are given an ECG strip, since we know, okay, I didn't talk about your PR segment, yes. Can you see your PR segments? Yes, your PR segments here. Your PR segments, yes. Yes, or let's say PR interval. Interval means a wave and a straight dash. Or segment is only a straight dash or the ISO line. Okay, let's talk about it. If this point, this delay, this straight line, is represents the delay. I told you that this AV node delays. So if there is, when we, when we move on, you understand, if there's a problem with the AV node, let's say the AV node is, delay the impulse for a longer time of course will be increased length of that um of this pr segment okay just keep that in your mind when we start with the ecg you understand so to start with the ecg there are key things you need to know there are five things you need to ask yourself the first thing is heart rate next heart reading third p wave fourth pr interval fifth qrs complex what do i mean by this to know your heart rate very easy what should you do now we're going to use this beautiful presentation so that you can understand i'm going to zoom it very well yes to count your heart rate the next thing you ask yourself is how many boxes okay before i even talk about how many boxes i skipped a presentation look here now normally you can you say you have one big box like this this is one box yes and you have in the inside one big box you have five smaller boxes so one two three, four, five. There's going to be a fifth one, yes, but this is a drawing so that it's easier because if I open an ECG, it might be confusing, yes, but know that it's meant to be five small boxes, one, five smaller boxes inside what? One box. So one tiny box is what? 0 0.04 seconds and one big box is 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, now that we know that, let's continue. So we want to check the heart rate. To check the heart rate, how do you check the heart rate? Let's find that out. To check the heart rate, you ask yourself, how many boxes do you have? Because we know this is our R wave, yes? Q, R, then this one is S. So you ask yourself, how many boxes do you have in between your R waves? So you, let's count one, one, like this, one big box, yes? One box, second box, and third box. Then you tell yourself 300 divided by three is what? 100 beats per minute. So in this intensity was a normal ECG, yes? It will be 100 beats per minute. Imagine if the distance was 10, let's say this um, R wave wasn't here. So you have, there was the first one and this was the second one. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven, right? We have seven, 300 divided by seven is what? Let me just do that. 300 divided by seven is 42 beats per minute. Can you see that that's very low? Yeah, so that's how you count your what? Heart rate, understand? If you don't understand, call me back. The next thing you ask yourself is the rhythm. Very important. What do they mean? Is it regular or irregular? Look at this ECG. Just look at it with your eyes. Let's count the boxes. One, two, three. Yes, let's look at the next part. One, two, three. One, two, three. Can you see that it's within that range of two, of sorry, of three, right? Three or maybe three quarters within that range. But from your, the way you're looking at it, it looks regular. But in an irregular, if it's irregular, it means, let's say this R wave was here. Then another one was here. Then another one was very far. Can you see that it's not regular? Yes, so that's irregular. Good. Let's move on to the third one. If you don't understand, call me back. P wave. The way they will ask you is, is the 
is the ECG sinus? That's the way they will ask you. Is this sinus? What they mean is, is there P wave? That's what they're asking you. Yes, in this ECG, you can see what P wave. And you know that the P wave, can you see? Can you see? It's, it has to be dome shape and there's a normal range. Yes, once we finish, I'll give you the normal range for everything. Can you see? The, it is dome shape and it has a normal range. Yes, the normal range is 0. Let's my look. The normal range is zero point of P wave is zero point zero six to zero point zero point zero six to zero point one. And if you look at this picture, if I just let me just zoom it a little bit, let's look at our P wave more. Our P wave, yes. Can you see that our P wave? Can you see that it's like one box and a half? Yes, I know mean, one tiny box. Yes, is zero point zero four seconds. So let's add. Let's say because of this tiny box is 0.06. So can you say it falls within that range? Because I told you your P wave should be 0.06 to 0.1. Can you see? Good. Okay. That's what they ask you, this sinus. So because depending if your if there are pathological changes, if your F wave is if your P wave is looking like a tooth, it, it will mean something when we move on. Your PR interval. Now, this is very important because we're not talking about heart blocks to make sense. Your PR interval is from here to here. Because you know, I told you that if this place gets longer, it means there's what? Any question for me, Philip? Philip, any question? Okay, let's continue. So if there's lengthening, it's a problem. So that's what they're talking about, PR interval. Your PR interval, uh, we'll see it as we're moving on, yes? Then the next question they'll ask you is QRS complex. How is your QRS complex? The QRS complex has a normal range. And you see the way it should look like, yes? We're going to see it when we start because QRS complex represents depolarization. So if there's pathological changes in your QRS complex, you know that, oh, the issue is with your what? Ventricles. All right, so you know the five things you should check. Let's start reading our ECG. Before I will read the ECG, there are five terms I'm going to describe for you. Please know these terms. Number one, automaticity. Automaticity is the ability of the heart to generate impulse without external stimuli. So the ability of the heart to generate impulse on its own. Conductivity is the ability of the heart to conduct or carry impulse. Is the ability of the heart to conduct impulse. So when you talk about conductivity, it's like your AV node, yes, because your AV node conducts the impulse The AV node conducts the impulse from this atrium to the world ventricle. So that's conductivity, the ability of the heart to conduct impulse. Excitability, the ability of the heart to respond to the stimuli. Okay, your heart has generated impulse automatically. Can the heart respond to it? Can the many parts of the heart respond to it? That's excitability. Contractility is the ability of the myocardium to contract. So now that you know that, okay, then the last term is arrhythmia. Arrhythmia is violation of the heart physiological properties such as automaticity, conduction, and contraction, and contraction. Now, let's start. If you see a question in Croc where they describe a normal ECG or they, they, they describe an ECG and you see that it's normal, they're talking about what? Automaticity. Just know that and know this. Let's move on. Now, let's start with pathological changes, yes? Okay, now I told you that, um, let's start with this. Let's start with this sinus rhythm. What is sinus rhythm? Sinus rhythm means, normal sinus rhythm means the, um, the heart, everything is normal. There's P wave, everything is perfectly normal. And then the beat, the heart rate should be 60 to 100 beats per minute, full stop. Sinus bradycardia is less than 60. Sinus tachycardia is greater than 100 to one, what, 160, very important. 160. Sinus arrhythmia, I told you what arrhythmia is, yes. I also want to differentiate something called respiratory arrhythmia. Respiratory arrhythmia is normal. It just means that it, like when you're inspiring, the your um, heart rate increase. And once you're expiring, the heart rate decrease. Then there's sinus arrest or cardiac arrest. So now, now that I've explained this, I, I'm, now that I've explained this, 
Okay, this is not normal. Yes, this is normal. Let's look for. Let's look for a pathological one. So, can you say this ECG? Yes, that's why I wanted to use that, but it looks confusing, but I'll explain it. Um, can you see that? Yes, there's a P wave. Yes, QRS, then there's a T wave. Yes, but what do you notice? Can you see that the distance? Let's look at the distance from our R wave to our R wave. Let's count the boxes. Yes, let's count the boxes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 300 divided by 7 is what? 42 bits per minute. So, of course, this is what sinus bradycardia, because everything is normal. There's P wave here, so it's sinus bradycardia. Look here. So, you should know that in sinus bradycardia, everything will be normal. The rhythm is regular, the P waves is, is there, your PR interval is normal, your QRS complex is normal, but what? The heart rate is less than 60 bits per minute. The next one, if any student wants to give it a try. We can try example. Then sinus tachycardia, can you see? Let's count the boxes within our RR interval. One, two, and a half, so 2.5. 300 divided by 2.5 is what? 300 divided by 2.5 is 120. So you can see that everything is normal, right? Everything is normal in sinus tachycardia. Everything is normal. PR, your P wave, PR interval, QRS complex is reading, it's regular, but your heart rate is greater than what? Is 120. Can you see that there's P wave, QRS, and a T wave? P wave, QRS, T wave. This is a normal ECG. Can you see that it looks very different when you're looking at it? Sinus respiratory arrhythmia. It increases with inspiration and decreases with expiration. It's normal. Okay, we are in what? Heart block. Let's start heart block. That's the most important one. <sighs> what did they define heart block as? Transmission is slow through what? It is what? Prolongation of a PR interval. Okay, before I start with this, note this down. The normal P wave is what? 0 0.06 to 0 0.1 seconds. Your PR uh, segment should be should be 0 0.12 to 0. Point, your PR interval, yes, 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds. Your QRS complex is 0 0.12 seconds. Your ST segment is 0 0.08 to 0 0.12. And your T wave is 0 0.16 to 0 0.24. Okay, now that we know that. They said that hard block is what? Prolonged PR interval. Does it not make sense to you? I told you that when there's prolonged PR interval, it means that there's delayed ability, there's what there's more delay of that impulse in your AV node. So that's why it means a block because it's a block. Yes, it makes sense that your this is taking time to get here. So there's something stopping it. They block. What is first degree heart block? I've well, started, right? It's very easy. Once you know how to read it, it's just very easy. It means that what? First degree hard work means there's what prolongation of your PR interval. That's what it means. They're just lengthening of a, everything is normal. Every ECG is regular. Everything is normal. But there's what prolongation of a PR interval. So I told you a PR interval is what 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds. So if you read your ECG strip and you see that your PR interval is long, it's 0 .10, uh, 0 0.6, for example, that is what a first degree hard block. Second degree heart block, there are two types. The first one is called Winky Back, and the second one is called Mobit 2. Yeah, the first one can also be called Mobit 1 or Winky Back. What does that mean? There's prolongation of your PR interval, but it is progressive. And then there's a drop. What do I mean by a drop? Look. Just know it. If you see here that what uh, the PR interval, can you see it's very long? This is very long. Yeah, there is, there's continuous prolongation. Look at your second P, P, P uh, wave. Can you see how long is your PR interval? But what do you know? So do you see your QRS complex? No. So there's a drop. But in type 2, in the Mobis type 2, that's the second degree hard block. Let's look for it. Look. This your what is this person draw? 
there's lengthening of your PR of your PR interval. It's not they didn't draw it for here because this is what you see. This is a paper, so it's not perfect. Just know that in second degree hard block, there's lengthening of your PR interval. Yes, there's a drop. But what's the difference between the Mobit 1 and Mobit 2? In Mobit 1, the PR interval is getting progressively longer. So in the first QRS complex, like in this, for example, it is 0 0.8. The second one will be 0 0.10. Sorry, 0 0.9. The next one will be 0 0.95. Can you see that it's getting progressively longer? Then there'll be a drop. But in this Mobit 2, it is the same 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, but there's a drop. Okay, so that's just the difference. Then third degree hard block, it means there's what complete block. So there's there's no it's a complete block. The, the impulse is not getting to the ventricle. So the ventricle will start to contract on its own and the HR will be contracting. So you can see that you have a separate heartbeat or heart rate for your P wave and a separate heartbeat. So your tell you clock will tell you that your HR contraction is 90 bit per minute and your ventricle contraction is 20 bit per minute. So that's complete what block. Okay, now that we know that, let's move to the arrhythmia. Very easy. Please, is it making sense? Arrhythmias. What is the first one? Atrial flutter. Atrial flutter. What is the key things you need to focus on the atrial flutter? Look here. Look at the um, heart rate, 200 to 50 to 400. What do you notice? It will be regular. Okay, forget this in the road here. It will be regular. Your P waves are absent, but they're replaced with something called your flutter waves or F waves, also known as what saw two pattern. So when you look at your ECG strip, let's see there's an ECG strip here. Can you see how it looks like? It looks like a saw tooth, like it's sharp. Can you see it's saw tooth? It's regular. Look at it. Does it not look regular to you? It's regular. But you notice that this thing is looking like a saw tooth. This is atrial flutter. And the heart rate is 250 to 400. So 250, it means that this ECG is not so perfect, yes? Because if you count the amount of boxes, you have one, two, three. And you say 300 divided by three is 100 bits per minute. So this ECG is, is, is if, I, is, if, if they send me this ECG, Maybe this is a, 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 a the person is just beginning to develop. Maybe it's a very initial stage of atrial flutter, but normally atrial flutter should start. If you look at in the normal clinical setting, get an ECG strip of atrial flutter to be heart rate to be very high. Yes. Then the atrial fibrillation. What's the difference? Atrial fib. Oh, perfect ECG. Look at the heart rate. 350 to 400 beats per minute. Yes, or 300 to 400 beats per minute. Oh. Look here, can you see here that it's as if it's almost one? I mean, it's two, but if it's two, 300 divided by two is 150. Uh, so let's say it's, let's just assume it's one. Yes, it's one. You know, ECG should be to be one. So if it's one, yes, it means that it is um, three, 300 bit per minute. But what do you notice? It is irregular. Look at it. Does it not look irregular to you? Look at the space between here and look at the space between here. Can you see how different it is? So what's irregular? So atrial flutter is regular sawtooth pattern this is what irregular and it's very high yes good p waves will be absent can you see that you can't see any p wave the qrs complex will be normal too but when we get to ventricular let's get to ventricular let's see what this is okay pfs pac and no i want to do ventricular so uh, there's there's really nothing like you hardly see crop talk about ventricular flutter because it hardly doesn't exist. If there's any ventricular flutter, it rapidly changes to ventricular um, fibrillation. So in ventricular fibrillation, the heart rate will be 200 to 500 beats per minute. It is very irregular, and you will not see P wave. And then there'll be a chaotic, or let's say your QRS complex will be distorted. Your QRS. If don't worry, first talk about it, they'll tell you that the heart is quivering. I see the heart is vibrating, like it's shaking. Once you see that, it's ventricular fibrillation. Then let's talk about PAC and PVC. Now we are going to ectopic contraction. No, I would, I'll talk about this towards the end of the lecture in case anybody wants the additional knowledge, but I've not seen Croc talk about this. So we'll focus on Croc, yes? Then let's move on to the next part of the lecture. It's cardiac insufficiency. Cardiac insufficiency, what does it mean? It is a state where the heart cannot pump blood to what to the organs through the systemic uh, vessels. It is condition characterized by inability of the heart to provide blood supply of organs, to provide organs with blood. What are the classification? 
Now, I'll just explain. When you hear compensated, it means that the heart has undergone a structural change. Yes, for example, maybe uh, the heart has undergone hypertrophy. And then due to this hypertrophy, the heart has met the body's demand. So that's compensated. But decompensated means the heart has probably hypertrophy or the heart has dilated, but it's not able to meet the demand of the body. That's decompensated. Okay. But you can see the other classification, yes? On your own, you can write this down because it's for your knowledge. Then there's also left and right uh, cardiac insufficiency, but I like to say left and right heart failure. Write this down. When you have, you have because heart failure can be in the left side or in the right side. If the heart failure is in the right side, acute, acute left side heart failure. Acute left side heart failure mostly presents with pulmonary edema. Chronic left side heart failure will present with brown in duration of the lung. Don't worry, part of morphology will dig into this in detail. Why it's called brown in duration of the lungs. In the right acute heart failure, it prevents with ascites, edema of your liver. But in chronic right heart failure, it presents with what browning of your lungs. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Browning of your liver, browning of your kidneys, so on and so forth. Okay. The cardiac insufficiency due to overload and due to resistance. Overload is mostly seen in valvular insufficiency or valvular regurgitation or hypervolemia because hypervolemia means there's increased blood volume, so there will be increased blood pouring into the heart and the heart can fail due to that. In valvular insufficiency, you have regurgitation, yes? What is this? I'd love to show you a picture of the heart so that everything moves. Let's look at the heart picture, yes, so we can know about valvular incogitation. I hope my network is perfect today, but let me just be reading as we're waiting for that picture. Overload by resistance means that there's a resistance, so your heart has to pump harder against this resistance. So of course, your heart is always trying to pump harder against resistance. Your heart can fail. So that is why it's mostly seen in valvular stenosis or hypertension, because hypertension is more of what arterial hypertension, so more of what Arterial hypertension has to do with diastolic blood pressure, yes. Arterial hypertension means your vessels are constricted. The vessels are constricted. What is that? It means your, the vessels, the, the lumen is small, so you have to always have to pump. Then the vessels are small, there's increased pressure, so you have to have to pump against this pressure. So that's are the causes. Look at this beautiful picture of the heart. Let's use this. So I think about it, if there's stenosis of your valve, so it means that the valve is stenosed. So the valve, imagine when your right ventricle is trying to pump blood, and then this valve is stenosed, it's, it cannot open. So if you look at this tiny lumen. It means that you have to have to pump, because the heart is only contracting once, and you have to want to pump all this blood into this tiny lumen. So you have to have to be pumping harder. So can you see what, you can see how bad that is? That's why it's by resistance. But due to maybe regurgitation, that's overload. It means that this valve is what is, is regurgitation is open, it cannot close, it's like flappy. So what will happen is when your right ventricle pumps blood like this, yes, instead of the first, because once your right ventricle pumps blood and it's relaxed, the valve is supposed to close. But imagine if it's regurgit insufficiency, yes, it means that once the right ventricle pumps the blood, the blood will pour back. Do you see? So the heart always have to what, pump, pump, keep pumping, keep pumping to take this blood because your body will also be what starving from this blood. Okay. Please know the causes. Once you know the causes, everything is easy. Let's move on. So I've talked about volume and insufficiency. Okay, another cause of heart failure can be due to, another cause of cardiac insufficiency can be due to damage of the myocardium or can also be due to arrhythmia. Can damage of the myocardium, what, what are the reasons? Arrhythmia, myocarditis, myocardiopathy. So know the three what causes. Cardiac insufficiency due to coronary artery circulation because your heart also your heart itself need blood yes and that is through the coronary vessel so if there's a, a thrombola or spasm or atherosclerosis of the vessels that are supplying blood to the heart itself the coronary vessels the heart will, will not get oxygen and the heart is not getting oxygen the heart will undergo ischemia and die itself yes the heart insufficiency can be due to damage of the pericardium like pericardi pericarditis cardiac tamponade cardiac tamponade means that there's uh, fluid in the card in the uh, pericardial cavity. So of course your uh, your heart is like is covered with uh, with the pericardial the parietal pericardial and the visceral and there is a cavity. 
So if there's a fluid there, it means that the heart will be, think about it, if there's a fluid, it's, it's compressing the heart, yes, and the heart cannot contract, the heart can also die. Then in pericarditis, of course, there's inflammation of the uh, last part of the heart, so that's too. We'll talk about these clinical forms of congestive heart failure when we are in pathomorphology. Okay, next thing. What is reperfusion syndrome? Reperfusion syndrome, this is when, think about it, when your heart dies, your sarcoplasmic reticulum that stores calcium will, uh, will die, yes, and to release calcium into the blood and into the nearby structure of the heart. When you now, when, after, um, they have removed this obstruction, yes, and the heart is not getting blood versus blood. Because of a lot of blood, a lot of cells will want to perform actions, and because there's excess calcium being released, of course, imagine there will be so much contraction, and then this can cause very severe pain, and then patients will die. It's like the heart will not relax. If the heart doesn't relax, how can the heart receive blood to pump again? So can you see, the heart will just be, will just be what in one contracted state. So it's very bad. Then there's something known as the Dressler syndrome. Dressler syndrome develops as a result of autoantibody production on the changed myocardium proteins and characterized by serious membrane inflammation. So what happened is that when the heart is trying to undergo all these changes due to some pathology, yes, like hypertrophy and so on and so forth, the heart's myocardium can start to change proteins or shape and your body can take this as foreign and then your body will start to attack it and it's characterized by serious membrane inflammation so it's characterized by once you see the three p's pericarditis pleurisis peritonitis yes classic sign of dresser syndrome then when your heart is about to when your heart's in tanker stress yes it's not like any small stress your heart will just die your heart has to compensate there's the urgent and there's urgent compensation and then later the long-term compensation. Urgent compensation is divided into two, heterometric and homometric. Heterometric compensation, this is mostly due to cardiac overload, yes, by volume. And you know the causes I've explained. What happened is that because of this um, overload, yes, of by volume, there's dilation or there's stretching, dilation, yes, and stretching of your heart. And because of that, your heart will take this as a signal. It's immediate to what increase the force of heartbeat. But in homometric uh, mechanism, what happens is that when there's increased resistance, your body, your, due to stenosis or arterial hypertension, your body, your heart has noticed that there's increased resistance. Your heart will what undergo, will increase the heartbeat by undergoing hypertrophy. So it becomes thicker so that there are more myocytes to contract against this. But in volume, it will be like dilation because the heart will We'll be taking in more blood to be stretching so now when you're talking about the heterometric mechanism there's something known as the my myogenic dilation i want to quickly jump to that place there is the myogenic dilation and tonogenic dilation initially the tonogenic dilation take place what happens is that and it's mostly in the compensated state yes what happens is that when this um heart has stretched yes has dilated it's what there will be increasing the force of contraction the frequent the force yes and that's the tonic dilation. But what happened is, think about it, then later your heart will start to fail. The, that part, that uh, mechanism, the heterometric mechanism will start to fail, mostly in the decompensated state. And what will happen is that there'll be dilation, but the heart has practically given up here, so there'll be decreased force of contraction. But this is mostly due to overload, yes? Okay. Let's move. Then, we talked about then tachycardia, of course, because Think about it. Look here. If your heart is undergoing hypertrophy, yes, let's say this is your myocardium. Your heart undergoes myotrophy and it becomes thick to this place. Can you see that there's less, less volume of, there's less space for blood. So to compensate for this decreased amount of blood, your heart will start to beat faster. Okay. Then the long-term duration. You should know that there's physiological hypertrophy. Hypertrophy occurs in sportsmen because they run a lot and because of that, their heart is always trying to pump blood to, to muscles and your heart can undergo physiological hypertrophy. This is normal. But pathological hypertrophy, what is it? Now, there are three stages.
there's three stages. Emergency state, state of complete hyperfunction, and state of gradual exhaustion. In the emergency state, what happens is that your heart is hyperfunctioning. Emergency your heart is in panic state. So your heart will be undergoing, will be uh, metabolizing glucose so fast. It will be um, the the uh, the, bio, the biological processes that take place in the heart will be undergoing to be taking to be so fast. Yes, you have to be consuming a lot of glucose. It's in panic. It's just hyperfunctioning, no hypertrophy. Then, of course, due to a lot of glucose and a lot, and then because it takes time for DNA synthesis to occur, right? Then later, with stage of complete hypertrophy, your heart will undergo hypertrophy, and then there'll be a balance. Yes, your heart is not in panic state. It's a balance. Then, in the gradual exhaustion, this is where your heart is failing. Yes, your heart will fail. Your heart will start to die. And what happens when your heart starts to die? Tell you that your heart is replaced by more scar tissue, which is, which is known as what? Cardiosclerosis or cardiofibrosis. Yes, scar tissue. Let's start with our MCQ. Let's start with our MCQ. Oh, I didn't do hypertension. That's hard, yes. That's hard for you, but we'll do it, yes. When I say a question, we'll go back. Let's start. It will, it's what makes sense now. Okay. A patient has myocardial infarction. Oh, I forgot to say that just as um, I told you, that, of course, in the just as in, um, syndrome, your heart is undergoing like changes, yes, and that's why your body starts to attack it. But in, of course, 1.5 months or like great after like one month, yes, because it takes time for your heart to your body to make for your heart to start changing. Hypertrophy takes time, like let's say one week, then for your body to start making antibodies, it takes another time. So it starts, it's you, you mostly see it if a patient has myocardial infarction. And the patient comes to you later complaining of pruritus, um, pericarditis, pneumonia. Can you see like three P's, yes, or peritonitis, yes? You're thinking of what Dressler syndrome. They ask you what is the mechanism. So, of course, you know it's autoimmune. So, the answer will be what? B. The ECG findings of a patient with idiopathic hypertension are the following sinus reading, it means the P wave is perfectly normal. Pulse rate is 92 beats per minute, is normal. Normal range is 60 to 100. The interval of PQ is 0.19 seconds is normal. The complex of QRS is not changed, so it's normal. So they're describing a what? A normal ECG. So what function of myocardium take place? Of course, automaticity. The function is normal. The heart is able to do things on its own. Yes, automaticity. The heart is able to generate impulse on its own. A patient has ischemic disease caused by coronary artery atherosclerosis, thrombosis of the frontal interventricular artery developed after coronography. What is the initial mechanism of this complete of this of this complication development? So, the man had ischemia of the heart due to coronary artery atherosclerosis. Thrombosis occurred. So, I think I covered this in last lecture. Yes. What caused this thrombosis? That's what they are asking. Is due to what? The answer should be damage of the endothelial vessel wall. So atherosclerosis, there's fat deposition in your vessels, yes, and there are other deposition. And what happens is that it forms plaque and this can damage the vessel wall. And remember from last lecture, I think I explained the um, complement system. I told you that once your platelets, yes, come in on your, on your, on your coagulation factors come in contact with your exposed collagen, yes, in your vessels, it will start the form, formation of a of the platelet plug, then secondary hemostasis, yes. So that's why the answer would be damage of the vessel wall because of the atherosclerosis. A 45 year old patient complains of deep sneer during exercise, edema of the leg. She has been ill for two years. There are frequent angina in amnesis. Circulatory insufficiency was diagnosed. What hemodynamic parameter of the heart? The compensation is this case. So the answer would be of course decrease of the minute volume of the heart. Ah, this crook. They're very they're very they're very smart. Look here. The patient has a, what edema, deep sneer, and they say she has circulatory insufficiency. So inability of the heart to pump blood. They want you to think backwards. If there's if the heart cannot pump blood, it means that the blood will be pulling in the words in the in the in the veins, yes, because the heart cannot pump blood. So the blood will pour into the heart. Yes, the first blood will pour into the heart. The heart is not pumping. In. So how would the other blood enter the heart? It's not possible, yes. So the blood will be pulling in the veins. If the blood is pulling in the veins, what do you think will happen? Increase hydrostatic pressure. If there's increased hydrostatic pressure, there'll be what? Edema of the what? Of the legs. 
So that's why the answer will be decrease of the minute volume of the heart. What is minute volume of the heart? Minute volume of the heart is the ability of the heart is, is what? Cardiac output and stroke volume. What is stroke volume? What is cardiac output, guys? Cardiac output is the, um, is the volume of blood that the heart ejects every contraction. And stroke volume is the uh, that's the strength the heart is using to contract. If you want to know more about stroke physiology, yes. So, of course, cardiac insufficiency, there will be decreased stroke volume and cardiac what, output. So, that's what causes the edema. Does it make sense? <laughs> 109. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. A 25 year old man was found having failure of the mitral valve without disturbance of circulation. What immediate adaptive reaction took place. So failure of the mitral valve is like regurgitation, yes, insufficiency. So because of that, there's what? A uh, blood pulling back into the heart, there's dilation. But they're telling you that there's no what disturbance of circulation. So it means the heart has what? After the dilation, it means the heart was what? Contracting harder. What is that? Of course, the answer would be heterometric. Homometric is what? Is due to what? Stenosis or arterial hypertension. I'm not talking about that here. It's what mitral insufficiency or failure of the mitral valve. So that's why the answer is B. Why not myogenic dilation? Because myogenic dilation means that the heart has dilated, but what? Not pumping well. So if the heart is not um, increasing the contraction, it means there will be what? Failure. There will be signs of failure of, of circulation. Yes. So another option Cock can put instead of heterometric would be what? Tonogenic dilation. A 65 year old patient complains of heart pain that followed a psycho emotional stress. An ambulance doctor diagnosed ischemic disease of the heart, stenocardia. What is the mechanism of ischemia? Of course, due to the emotional stress, uh, uh, there is increased sympathetic state. Sympathetic state will, what, will cause vessel constriction, yes. And vessel constriction, your coronary vessels is also subjected to vessel constriction. And because of that is what angiospastic, angiovesospastic, what contraction, yes. So angiospastic, that's what caused it. The changes of the ECG findings of a patient are the follows, finally. At first, there's what prolongation of a PQ interval. Single QRS complex, what drop out. The increased quantity of dropouts, QR, there's increased quantity of QR, the system, the same thing, the QRS complex is still dropping. Finally, the contraction of the atrium and the ventricle became what? Different. Frequency of atrium is 70, frequency of ventricle is 30. What is this? Of course, complete heart block. Complete heart block, when you're talking about heart block, is what? Inability of the uh, impulse to be transported from the atrium to the ventricle, yes? So atrial ventricular block of what type? The third type. So what they just did here in number eleven was describe the stages. So this actually first started with type two, then progressed towards the complete heart block, which is the type three. So that's why it's what T. A forty-five year old, a forty-four year old patient complains of deep snare, palpitation, pain in the right hypochondrium, edema of the legs. The ECG finding as follows: hypertrophy of both ventricles and right atrium. So there's hypertrophy of both ventricles and also of the right atrium. Failure of the triskupski valve is diagnosed. What is the variant failure? So what did they say? There's hypertrophy of both ventricle and right atrium. Look at this picture here. I want you guys to understand this heart failure because it's very easy. There's, oh, why did they remove what I was looking at? So as you can see, so there's failure of the word Tchaikovsky valve. This is your Tchaikovsky valve, yes? Tchaikovsky, no, this is your Tchaikovsky, sorry. This is your Tchaikovsky. This is Bykovsky, Tchaikovsky. Bykovsky, also called mitral valve, Tchaikovsky. So there's failure of your Tchaikovsky valve. So like failure, like regurgitation, yes? So the, uh, uh, or prolapse. So the uh, blood is always, blood is always like, um, blood is always returning back to this, his blood is always entering here anyhow. So because of that, there was hypertrophy here so that the heart can pump blood away, uh, so on and so forth. There's hypertrophy of the right atrium, so on and so forth. Then they ask, what 
pathogenic, what caused the heart failure? Of course, cardiac overload due to what? Increased volume. Examination of a 60 year old youth revealed acceleration of the heart speed during inspiration and retardation during expiration. Okay. The finding of the ECG are as follows, so on and so forth. What is this? Of course, respiratory arrhythmia. A 45 year old patient has such changes in the ECG. The PQ interval is prolonged. Each second or third QRS complex is missing. What type of block is observed? There's prolongation of a QP or your PQ interval. And then the, uh, there's drop of your QRS uh, complex. But it didn't specify whether the PQ interval prolongation is progressive or if it's not progressive, yes. But I'm sure that they will not put two types. So the answer will be what? Incomplete atrioventricular block <laughs> of the third degree. Look at what they are doing. Now, you have first degree heart block, second degree heart block, and third degree heart block, yes? Now, uh, the first degree heart block, that's what, that's what is incomplete, yes? That's why it's first degree. The second degree heart block, both classes, the Mobis 1 and Mobis 2 are incomplete. Then the third degree heart block is complete. But why did they write third degree uh, of the third degree? Because they are, the way Crock is saying it is that in the first hard block, it's first the first um, degree hard block is first degree, yes. Then the uh, second degree hard block, but type one will be the second degree. Then the second degree hard block type two will be third degree, and then the third degree hard block normally will be complete atrioventricular block, okay. But the way international classification is first degree, second degree type one and two, and third degree. So, but this is crock for you, yes. Uh, they didn't notice that they didn't put of the second degree in the option because they didn't also what specify. An hour after the application of the ring narrowing of the aorta of a dog, force and frequency of systole increase. So they narrowed what? They narrowed the what aorta. So if you think they will narrow the aorta, there's what? You can think about it. There's what increase what? What good? arterial pressure. Then I asked you, then I said what so on and so forth, that body volume of circulating blood and thickness of the ventricle did not differ from initial parameters. So there's no, um, what stage of hypertrophy is this? So there are three stages of hypertrophy, emergency, the, I said it right. So of course, if the, if the thickness did not change, so it means there was no hypertrophy, yes. So there's no hypertrophy, it means what you are in the first stage. So that's why the answer will be emergency. A patient has arterial hypertension as a consequence of hypertonic crisis, acute heart failure developed. What is the main mechanism of the heart failure? So this person has what? Hypertonic crisis, hypertonicity. There's what? Vessel constriction. If there is vessel constriction, there's what? Increased resistance. So, so that's what? Cardiac failure due to increased resistance. So that's option 116. The answer should be D. Good. It makes sense, yes. Reperfusion syndrome, activate process of free radical oxidation, so on and so forth. And excessive accumulation of what ion in the cytoplasm caused this damage. Of course, the answer will be calcium. A month after reproducing experimental arterial hypertension, the thickness of the left ventricle of the thickness of the left ventricle of the dog heart became 1.7 times bigger. Further, the mass of the heart did not enlarge. Further, the mass of the heart did not enlarge. The minute uh, volume normalized. What myocardial hypertrophy is observed? Of course, the answer would be C, complete hypertrophy. Yes, the second stage. The first stage is what emergency. Second stage is what complete hypertrophy. And what's the third stage? Progressive cardiosclerosis. So that's why I told you in the second stage is hypertrophy. That's why they said the heart became thicker. Hypertrophy, yes. But they now said further, the heart did not. So further, everything is normalized. I told you that the heart undergo hypertrophy and then everything will normalize. Yes. Yeah? So that's why the answer is complete hypertrophy. So second stage. So clock can change this to second stage. If you see your teenager complains of sensation of air hunger, general weakness, palpitation, the heart rate is 130. The arterial pressure is 100 by 60. The ECG is as follows. The QRS complex is of normal form and duration. The amount of P waves and particular color complexes is the same. The T wave is fused with the P wave. What arrhythmia is observed? So, of course, the answer would be what? Sinus tachycardia. Why? Why? Why are they saying it's fused? I know I didn't mention this, but 
if you can pitch, pitch, uh, and put it together. Let's look at ECG. Let's look at sinus tachycardia. Yes, look here, sinus tachycardia. Uh, I didn't mention it, but in sinus tachycardia, can you notice that because the, um, sorry, because the heart rate is contracting very fast, can you see that the T wave and the P wave, they are, they are almost close together. So sometimes in severe tachycardia, what can happen is that you can see fusion of your P and T wave, yes? Yeah? So that's what they're talking about. The, the T wave is using the P wave, so sinus tachycardia. A patient demonstrates abrupt arterial pressure increase due to change of the vascular tone. What compensatory mechanism provide the increased force of myocardial contraction in this case? So the answer would be what? Homometric. Patient demonstrate abrupt arterial pressure. Of course, arterial that home due to the changes of the vascular tone. Yes, so there's abrupt arterial pressure increase. Of course, I told you that homometric is due to what there will be increase in the uh, force of heart contraction. Yes, and increased force of heart contraction. And it's mostly due to um, like um, resistance. Yes, while heterometric is due to what dilation. And I explained the two type myo myogenic and tonogenic. So that's why the answer will be C. Huh. A 22 year old woman with rheumatic myocarditis demonstrates symptoms of heart failure. What is the cause? Of course, damage of the myocardium because myocarditis, I, I think I said it here, myocarditis, I'm not going to show you, but if you check it, yes, I said it that in myocarditis, there's inflammation, damage of the myocardium. This can also be an, another cause of what heart failure. A 39-year-old patient with signs of pulmonary edema and less ventricular heart failure was diagnosed with aortic stenosis. What is the cause of heart failure development? So aortic stenosis, yes. So it's increased what? Pressure. So that's what? It's increased uh, resistance. So that's cardiac overload due to blood outflow resistance. 122. Okay. A 30-year-old man had atherosclerosis of the blood vessel. The excess of what substance? So when I reach 130, I'm going to stop. And then I'll briefly explain the types of hypertension and then I'll do the remaining MCQs on my own and I'll send to the group. A 60 year old man had atherosclerosis of the blood vessel. The excess of what substance plays the reading low in the pathogenesis of disease? So I think I explained this biochemistry, yes. LDH, uh, low density hypoprotein. Yes, they are the bad cholesterol and it can cause atherosclerosis. A serious infectious disease resulted in myocarditis. Okay. Ah, my God. Let me quickly do this lecture first. There's another lecture. There's just so many lectures. Let's do the hypertension first before I go back to that. Then hypertension. What you know about hypertension? Hypertension can be primary, very important, also known as essential idiopathic. Why? Know the three names because crock and cough. If crock talks about hypertension that is unknown or appears to be a familiar like genetic issue, yes, it will be primary hypertension or essential idiopathy. Secondary hypertension occurs due to a secondary cause or another disease, and the most the most um common cause of secondary hypertension is Crohn's disease. What is that? Hyperadestinorism, increase of what sodium because of increase of adestinorism, there's increased reabsorption of sodium. So, uh, sodium will be accumulating in the blood, water will follow sodium, there's increased volume of blood and that could cause hypertension, yes. So that's secondary hypertension. Another cause of hypertension could be uh, stenosis of your renal arteries. If there's stenosis of your renal arteries, there'll be hypoxemia of your kidneys. Your kidneys will respond by releasing renin. Renin will also act to stimulate angiotensinogen and aldosterone. Angiotensinogen will cause vessel constriction, increase arterial blood pressure. Aldosterone will also reabsorb water, increase blood pressure. So another cause, yes. So it's second because you know the cause and it's not, it's due to another disease. The hypertensive crisis is rapid elevation of blood pressure, very high. If not treated, patient can die. Then you should also know this, yes. I think I've talked about systolic and diastolic in physiology. Then what is this? Hyperkinetic, hyperkinetic, and eukinetic. Hyperkinetic is increase of cardiac output or increase of systolic uh, pressure, yes? I think if you watch the physiology of um, blood systolic and diastolic, you'll know this. Increase of cardiac output, yes, or increased circulating blood volume or systolic pressure or stroke volume. Hyperkinetic is increased vascular resistance, hypertension, 
increase diastolic blood pressure, yes, because of I told you that diastolic pressure is reliant on the vascular resistance, yes. Then you can analytic is both of them. So why this is wasting our time? I say we'll stop in 130. I'll come back to 124 when I explain move Parkins when I explain that. A patient with failure of the mitral valve has developed hypertrophy of the of the left heart ventricle. What is the main mechanism of hypertrophy? So of course 125, the answer would be E. Huh. You need to read your question well. A patient with failure of mitral valve develop hypertrophy of the left ventricle. What is the main mechanism of the development of hypertrophy? Yeah, that's what what's what caused the hypertrophy? Yes, it was what decreased intensity of structure function. It was due to what your failure of the mitral valve that caused the hypertrophy. Yes, they're not asking you what is the other asking you um um what then for example if you said maybe activation of genetic mechanism yes because if there's hypertrophy it'll be they're not asking you how does hypertrophy occur yeah they're asking you what caused the hypertrophy what caused the hypertrophy was due to the mitral failure of the word mitral valve hmm. a patient with acute myocardial infarction has developed edema what condition this complication. So the answer would be left ventricle failure. Person with acute myocardial infarction has developed edema of the lungs. So of course, I told you that what left acute heart failure is what pulmonary edema. Yes. Uh, left chronic is what brown in duration of the lung. Yes. I think I mentioned this. A woman who has been suffering from arterial hypertension for 15 years manifests deep sneer and palpitation. Her systolic pressure has decreased a little. What is the main mechanism of the failure? She had what? Arterial hypertension. So of course, it's what? Due to what? Resistance. A patient was found to have the first degree heart block, which is elongation of your PQ interval. You know your PQ interval is 0 0.12 to 0 0.2. So you can see that this is 0 0.25, so it's high. It's increased. What caused this? Of course, it's, conduct, con, it's conductive disorder because heart block is conductive disorder. Inability of the if you know to carry the impulse from the atrium or to conduct the impulse from the atrium to the what ventricles will be. If you talk about the heart cannot pump blood or cannot contract the contractility issue, yes. A patient with rheumatism develop myocarditis with circulatory insufficiency. What disturbance of hemodynamic is typical of this case? So the answer will be decreased systolic pressure. Why decreased systolic pressure? Because the person has failure of the myocardium, the heart cannot contract. If your heart cannot contract, what is uh when the heart what when the heart contracted? That's um the heart will pump out blood. That has to do with I don't know stroke volume and cardiac outputs. Yes, and we know that it's highly. I told you that stro stroke volume that is and cardiac cardiac output is the. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. What is stroke volume and cardiac output? So. Look at this. Stroke volume is the is the um, amount of blood, oh look at it, amount of blood that is pumped by the ventricles. Why uh, cardiac output, cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate, okay? So cardiac output is, so I think I made a mistake when I was explaining previously. I have to cut that out. Cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate, yes? Cardiac output is also known as minute blood volume. So I told you that systolic pressure is dependent on what? Minute, vo minute volume or cardiac output. And cardiac output is stroke volume and heart rate. So if you have myocarditis, you cannot pump blood. Yes, there's also a decrease in heart rates because it's like failure of the myocardium. So that will affect what? Systolic pressure. That's why the answer is what B. If you want to know more on uh, systolic and diastolic, you have to check physiology. After a Okay, last question. After one branch of the coronary artery of a dog has been tied up, myocardial infarction with resorptive necrotic syndrome developed. What is the main characteristic symptom of this syndrome? Uh, they tied the artery of a dog, coronary artery, and then there's myocardial infarction and there's resorptive necrotic syndrome. That is the um the heart has been the heart that is infected is being what broken down by macrophages because they are dead cells, so they are being engulfed. If they are engulfed, yes, your heart is breaking down. You have release of your um, heart enzymes. I know that 
we have the uh, CK, CK for the heart is called what? CK and B, yes? Creating phospho, uh, creating kinase, creating kinase. So the enzyme is called creating phosphokinase. Okay, so that's why it will be C. Yes, because they're asking you what characteristic symptom of this syndrome? That is what of the resorptive necrotic syndrome. Because of course, if there's infection, you have pain behind breast bone. But they're asking you what is the characteristic sign of this necrotic resorptive syndrome. And necrotic resorptive syndrome means what? Degradation of the heart. Yes, the heart is being broken down and then there's release of heart content. So that's why you're going for C and not A. Then the last part of the lecture so that we can all go, then I'll do the remaining and send to the group. Morgan's Stoke syndrome, uh, Morganic Adam Stoke syndrome. Morganic Adam Stoke syndrome means complete heart block, but the heart block comes and goes. The heart block comes and goes. Yes, so that's Morgan's Stoke syndrome. Then Wolf Parkinson's syndrome. Look at this beautiful presentation. Remember that I told you that, look, there will be a connection, an additional connection between your atrium and your ventricles. Normally, if you check the previous, the note I'll be, pictures I'll be showing you, uh, of course, there's depolarization of the atrium, but there's no connection. It just stops. There's actually no connection. So in Wolf Parkinson's syndrome, there's a connection between these two parts. And because of that, the impulse will bypass your AV node. And what I tell you is, the, what's the function of the AV node? The AV node is to hold, is to delay that impulse so that your atrium can contract. But if, you, if your impulses are passed, are bypassing your AV node, what will happen? It means that both will be contracted at the same time. And if both contracted at the same time, it means what? It's a very serious issue, right? So let's go back to 125. So that's the two difference you should know. A serious infectious disease, so on and so on. They said a serious infectious disease resulted in myocarditis accompanied by damage of the conductive system of the heart. So due to the uh, myocarditis, there was damage of your heart structures. Periodic skin curve due to develop of Morgan's Adam Stokes syndrome. What kind of pathology did take place? Of course, what pathology took place? It will be transferring of incomplete uh, block to complete. Because I told you, Morgan's Adam Stokes means that the uh, hard block is coming and going. So from incomplete to complete, then to go back to incomplete, then sometimes it can be normal. Then. So that's why the answer will be C. Thank you very much. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.